parkour, one of the biggest parts of our beloved Minecraft. It can be chill and relaxing, or it can be extremely difficult and rage-inducing. Nonetheless, people love it, and when people love something, they find ways to get good at it and eventually turn it into a competition. This brings me to the big question. If every single Minecraft player had the chance to compete in a parkour competition, who would come out on top? Who is the best Minecraft parkourist? One week before the trial, I decided to give people a clue so they could start practicing and get better because the winner would get a free server from Dedicated MC, which means that this was going to be the most competitive trial so far. I changed both my YouTube and my Twitter banner to a short message that said jump in Morse code. However, this was still super easy to figure out, and intentionally so. People noticed these banners pretty early on, and the theories about what the next trial would entail began. Welcome to what I like to call the wave. Over 70 people stuck on the third jump of a parkour course that consists of 50 jumps in total. There are several sections to this parkour course, each consisting of multiple jumps. The last three jumps are each their own color, and each one is pretty difficult. Actually, every single jump in this map is difficult and super frustrating. Multiple neos, lantern jumps, tons of four block jumps, and a whole lot of cobwebs to get stuck in. Now I know what you're thinking, Boosfer, shouldn't the first part of the trial be the easiest one? Yes. Yes it is. The parkour server opened on the 3rd of April and was scheduled to close in 72 hours. In that time, people had to beat the parkour as fast as possible. Once you joined the server, your timer would start and you would receive a message in chat that explained everything you needed to know. As usual, I streamed the opening of this first event and during that stream, I mentioned that only 10 to 20 players with the fastest time would progress to the next phase of the trial. And so, the frustration began. What is this? What the fr- How is this possible? Oh. Yeah, see, it's, it blends in so well. Oh, fuck. What is this penis? Bro, you've been on this jump for 20 minutes, Boosfer, and you've been on my hour, so shut up, all right? This jump is actually impossible. What the fuck? A lot of players were competing to be at the top of the leaderboard, amongst them some of my friends, of which Kier surprised everyone with a whopping time of 17 minutes. This was really impressive to me, considering how tricky the jumps were, but not as impressive as 8 minutes. Yes, there were players who were beating my parkour map in under 10 minutes. And even though the majority of the player base suffered on the third jump, I was super impressed by how fast people were completing the course. The day of the closing. I started up my stream and hopped on the server. There were not a lot of people online, but there were still some who were really close to the end. 30 minutes passed and the server closed to the public. So I decided to jump on and try to beat it myself. Oh my god! Ah! Jump! Ah! Oh my god! Ah! Just like everyone else, I was frustrated. I did not realize how painful this was until I tried it myself. But you know what? I don't feel bad at all. The list was honestly not that long. Barely over 100 players managed to beat the parkour course, and understandably so. The top 10 fastest times were honestly incredible, going up to under 6 minutes. But that doesn't matter, because I lied. On the 9th of April, I tweeted this. It indicated that not only the 10 to 20 fastest players would move on to the next phase of the trial, but instead, everyone who finished the parkour could participate. And with that, phase 2 began. On the 10th of April, I started up my stream. People didn't actually know what was going to happen until they joined my stream and logged on to the server. I informed all of the contestants that they would be randomly picked out to be put in this tiny map, and the only thing they had to do was not get tagged by me. One by one, I started tagging the contestants. Ooh. Yo, what's up? <laughs> ah. Let's go! At the beginning, people were really nervous and lost because none of them had seen this map before, and I already had a lot of practice with it. TOLD YOU! NOBODY'S SAFE! Since I had this advantage, I thought that the only way someone survives beyond like 10 seconds was if I made a mistake and fell to the bottom. Get better. 
No! Then, all they had to do was stay on the higher ground and drag out the timer as long as they could. Bro! However, I was proven wrong because there were some really skilled players that took part in this event. Ah, uh, it's gonna be Ring Around the Roses, isn't it? Oh, no! I'm so bad. Fair play, fair play. I'm just, I just need to wait, wait for him to fall. Oh! How am I falling? How? How? There's no way! Oh my god! 52 seconds! Poland, a widely known Manhunt YouTuber who also does a lot of events on the side, joined the server. Everyone was prepared for him to do well and he did not disappoint. He set the event record, which was really impressive considering he had never set foot on this map before. There were also a lot of other insane players that almost beat his record. Okay, they're just waiting, okay. It's incredible how bad I am right now. Holy sh! Holy sh! I'm bad! And the 10 players with the best survival time moved on to phase 3. I set up a new Discord server and invited all 10 of the contestants. At first, everyone was super friendly and excited until I told them what the next event was going to be. Obstacle duels, also known as the Fruit Berries duels. In this game mode, two players have to race each other from the starting platform all the way to the finish line. The catch is that they have to do it by bridging past multiple obstacles without falling into the void. The obstacles vary in size and difficulty, and every game, the obstacle sequence is randomized. So it is never boring. The first duel was between Real Rion and CI Bullet. Based on previous statistics, this duel should have been pretty even, since Rion beat the first parkour map twice as fast, whilst Bullet showed to be way more consistent with his jumps under pressure and survived almost twice as long during the parkour tag event. However, all of that didn't matter when Rion mentioned that he does this exact minigame quite often in his free time. Bro, I know all of these jumps like the back of my head. Oh, okay, Rion is actually sweating. Bro, I'm not sweating. This put Bullet at a huge disadvantage with which proved to be their demise. All right, one, two. Okay, that's just disrespectful, <laughs> Rion. And the match ended with Rion going to the semifinals. The second duel between Poland and Aoi won was way more one-sided than I expected. The statistics from the previous events showed that Poland was better in both the wave and the parkour tag event. However, that didn't matter. Turns out Poland is extremely good at bridging and was probably the strongest player during this entire event. Oh, well, I saw that beehop. That's hacking. What? Don't tell them. Don't tell them. So even though Aoi showed incredible skill throughout this entire trial, oh, you wanna say the GGs before I uh, go up this little hill? It was not enough to get them through to the semifinals. Boost for Sack, subscribe to Poland. Okay. Sky Limit and Chopper One, complete liars. Before we started the duel, they said that they didn't even know how to speed bridge, and I believe them. But you know what's the first thing they did? They f speed bridged. Wait, Sky, you lied. You just speed bridged. Chopper, are you speed bridging too? I'm trying to. I never did it before. Not only did these guys compete using their skill, but they also decided to start playing mind games. This made the duel way more exciting, and it was truly a sight to behold. You guys are actually on the same page right now. Oh, what a clutch. Okay. However, even though it was super close, why did you fall, Sky? You can't be doing that here. Chopper managed to grab the win and move on to the semifinals. Are you just building a penis? The next duel was between Skyr Gaming and LEGO Master 3650. This duel was actually really close since both of the contestants had not done too much bridging before. None of you are falling. Okay, okay. Both of the contestants were really focused and dedicated to win. Okay, see you now. It's gonna be really close. Yeah, you guys are actually the same. Still really close. <laughs> Wait, no, it's impossible. Under, Wait. you have to go under. Yeah, you have to go under. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, that's so GG. Sad. That's so, GG. Just, that's, just, that was close, yeah. though. You got really close. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'll try to win in your honor, Sky. You did well, Sky. Like, that, that was Thank great. You. you did great. You kept up with me really well. Only 10 people made it here. Manhunting versus Meganix, the final duel. If we take a look at the statistics, Manhunting was way faster in the first event, whilst Meganix was better at surviving the parkour tag. I still expected a one-sided duel in favor of Manhunting due to that vast time difference in the first event. Oh my god, okay. This was probably the most skilled duel in the entire event because both of the contestants showed incredible skill, and even though Meganix was bridging really fast, Manhunting must have inhaled some pretty dark stuff because holy f 
just look at how he won this. Holy shit. Man Hunter is like on fire right now. Yeah, Mega, I think you just got a very unlucky opponent. GG's. After all those duels were over, I was left with five contestants and only two of them were gonna make it to the finale. We all joined the Discord voice chat and they sounded really anxious using every minute to practice whatever parkour they could. I eventually told them to join a server using this IP and they instantly knew what was going to happen. Dropper maps. Everyone seems to have a love-hate relationship with them, but how do you know if someone is good at it or if it's all just luck? The only information I had was that Poland obliterated Skeppy's dropper event a while ago, but I had no idea if the other four contestants were going to be good or not, so this was really exciting. Welcome to Advancius, a Minecraft server that offers a lot of different cool content. But we don't care about that. We are here for the dropper maps. There aren't too many maps to choose from, so before we started the event, I did some scouting to find three unique maps ranging from easy to hard difficulty. We were going to do three rounds where each time the person who was last to finish the dropper loses. And at the end of the event, only two players would remain and move on to the finals. The Forest, a dropper map that was labeled easy, turned out to be the most challenging one for the contestants. After a little bit, the contestants picked up the pace and beat it one after the other. Lego Master on his final attempt was one inch away from making it into the water and that one tiny inch lost him the game with Rion swooping the wind from right under his nose. Moving on to the medium difficulty, we have Knowledge, a dropper map filled with wooden bridges and bookshelves and one water source in the corner of the bottom layer. When I tried this map myself, I was really struggling with it. But I guess Chopper has some secret superpower because he made it in like three tries. Rion and Poland followed literally right after and Manhunting was sadly out of the game. For the final round, I picked a map called End, which was labeled Hard. The map was themed around the end dimension with a cheeky slime block that you had to hit in order to get all the way down to the water source. The slime block also allowed Chopper to slowly make his way down to the water source without having to fall all the way down in one go. Rion also seemed to pick up the same technique, but Poland did it in the correct way, which was way faster, and just look at how close this was. Oh, oh my god! What happened? Poland! Oh no! Wait, I went one inch away! Chopper and Rion, the two players who made it past all four of the previous challenges I had set for them, were ready to face off in a 1v1 situation. But what they didn't know is that they had to build the final challenge themselves. When they joined the server, all they saw was their own room that the challenge would take place in. I explained to them that they had to build a parkour map with a maximum of 30 jumps in that room, and I told them that they would have to race to finish each other's parkour. Your goal is to build a parkour course for the other person. No! Now, you are not allowed to build above the red line, and you cannot reuse a jump. The first person to get through that door wins. That's right, they had to build a parkour map for each other, and oh boy, did they not go easy. I gave them around 40 minutes to finish what they were building, and this is the result. Chopper's parkour mainly consisted of lime concrete and had a whole bunch of pretty frustrating jumps, such as the Iron Trapdoor Neo. This jump seemed to up the difficulty difficulty of this parkour level by a lot, so this is where both of them struggled the most. Rion's parkour map, on the other hand, had the well-known MCC parkour, which both of the players found to be the most challenging on this side of the wall. This side still seemed like the easier one, so both of them expected Chopper to have the upper hand in this challenge, since they had to do each other's parkour. Are you guys done? Are you sure? I guess. Okay, well, boys, um... So I lied. You are doing your own parkour course. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Chopper, go back to your parkour course. <laughs> After hearing the surprising truth, Chopper was super stressed, while Rion was cheering on his side of the wall, and expected this to be an easy duel, but he didn't know just how hard it was going to get. You guys are nervous, you guys are struggling. I am nervous. Even yeah. Rion is struggling with his, like, the, the double Shut up. Shut up. Things started off slow, and both of them were failing on the first jumps. Now I know what you're thinking, aren't they supposed to be, like, really good at parkour? You have to remember that this is the finale, and they have to make 30 difficult jumps in in a row without failing. So at this point, their heart rate was probably through the roof. Not to mention that after making those 30 jumps, there was a secret waiting for them through that spruce door. And it could really be anything. Oh! Chopper made it. Oh, okay. Chopper's far. 
Rion is also fun. Oh! <laughs> After around 30 minutes of parkour, they were getting way more consistent and reaching the far ends of their parkour course. But I was bored, so I decided to swap them every 5 minutes so both of them could try both of the maps. What if after like another 5 minutes of trying, I will tell you guys to swap parkour courses? That's good, yeah, of course. I'm gonna start the timer. This seemed to really throw them off and they started falling apart because they had to learn a whole new map all over again. No. Oh, really? <laughs> gonna be stuck on the first jump. Yo, Chopper, why are you struggling with this parkour. No. After passing the two hour mark, both me and the contestants were getting a little exhausted, but they still seemed to be in it to win it. So I decided to speed up the process a little bit. Ah, oh, come on, bro. Okay, boys, after the next swap, right? I'm gonna make one jump in each map easier. Ooh. Right. With each swap, the parkour courses would get easier and easier, which means that the chances of winning would rise with each swap. And so it was game on once again. Chopper is shopping. Bro, I just wish I didn't have this MCC parkour. Uh, Chopper is on the, on the Anvil Neo. Oh! Okay. Oh, Rion is so not falling hard. on them. Oh, if you make this, you're just... That's oh like my god, that's you were actually one jump away from winning. No I way. Know. Jump after jump. Fall after fall. These guys were not giving up. Their parkour skills became more and more consistent. And each one of them got closer and closer to winning every time they swapped. They were so close to reaching the spruce door. But what was behind it? Oh, okay. Wait, Wait you can actually beat it now. You can actually beat it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, He's at the head hitters. Okay. He made it. This was it. It was Chopper's chance to grab the victory. And all he had to do was beat the challenge behind the spruce door. But what was the challenge? Say hi to the five block jump. Just a regular jump without anything like ice blocks to boost you. The only thing making this jump possible were the blocks above your head that helped you gain momentum. Even with that said, this was still a super hard jump and Rion's chances at winning remained solid because there was no way Chopper could make this on his first attempt. Why can't you fall off? Just don't fall off, Chopper. <laughs> I don't want to, please. <laughs> you have to do this, Chopper. Oh my god, that's so scary. How? <laughs> Oh, that's close. <laughs> I hope one of you falls. Wait, can I you really make this? Yeah, I made it. This is a hard jump. If you do it perfectly, though. One of you falls. Do you think I'm like mad or something? Oh, he made it! GG's. Chopper made it! <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Kind of shaking right now. Yo. This trial was probably the longest and the most difficult one to win so far. And a huge congratulations to Chopper for winning the entire thing. He passed the wave. He survived the parkour tag. He demolished the obstacle duels. He dominated the dropper competition. And even though Rion did super well in the finale and almost reached the spruce door many times, it was not enough to take the win home. Before we finish the video, I want to give a huge thanks to Dedicated MC for for providing the prize, which is a free server to the winner of this competition. They are truly one of the best server host platforms out there, so you should definitely check them out for yourself down in the description below. Also, as a part of the prize, I will be doing a live manhunt with Chopper over on my Twitch channel, so make sure to check that out. And once again, congratulations to Chopper1 underscore for becoming the best Minecraft parkourist.